Hi, I'm Ranger Stephanie. And I'm Ranger Mike. And we're here at the Presidio. In Golden Gate National Recreation Area in San Francisco, California. Whee! <laughs> and I'm Ranger Julie from Stonewall National Monument in New York City. And on behalf of the National Park Service, please enjoy this collaborative program dedicated to Gilbert Baker. He's the artist who created the original rainbow flag and also an activist we honor this World AIDS Day. I didn't even think twice about what the flag would be. A rainbow fit us, it is from nature, it connects us to all the colors, all the colors of sexuality and all the diversity in our community. Really, up until the rainbow flag, the pink triangle was the dominant symbol that we used. Um, and, but it came from the Nazis, it was put on us. It had a really horrible uh, negative origin. The LGBTQ plus community has a long history of intertwining art and protest to combat discrimination and erasure. The story of the rainbow flag and Gilbert Baker from San Francisco to New York showcases the connections between the LGBTQ plus community, protest and art. Baker said, when all else fails, art is the ultimate weapon. Two pride parades, 1978 and 1994, were historic events for the rainbow flag and for the LGBTQ plus community. Though the protests looked different, from the gay liberation movement to ACT UP or AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power, the fight for visibility and equal rights was present in both. The connection between these two parades and protests starts on the shores next to the Golden Gate Bridge. The Presidio was the start of Gilbert Baker's journey in San Francisco. He came to this city as a medic in the army, living in the Presidio from 1970 to 1972. Baker wrote, I was assigned to the barracks on the sandy shores of the bay. My cubicle had a window with an unobstructed view of the Golden Gate Bridge. Baker fell in love for the first time in the Presidio, motivating him to be open about his sexuality after his discharge. He said, the power of love opened my closet door. Baker joined the gay liberation movement and worked with activists like Harvey Milk, Cleve Jones, and Pat Norman. On June 25th, 1978, Gilbert Baker and a team of his friends hoisted two 60 by 30 rainbow flags into the air at the United Nations Plaza in San Francisco. They had spent months laboring over the creations. Baker and his friends joined the Gay Freedom Day Parade and opened a piece of the rainbow flag. Baker wrote, as we carried it down the street, the crowd began tossing money at us and making wishes. A bizarre barrage of glittering coins flew all around us, some splashing onto the street. Drag queens approached and spread flowers in front of our footsteps. All of these people understood what we had worked so hard to create and what it was all about. We laughed until we cried. The years following this monumental event brought incredible change to San Francisco. The activism and advocacy of many would be forced to shift when the HIV epidemic began in 1981. The loss this epidemic brought to the LGBTQ plus community, the United States and the world is insurmountable. By 1984, San Francisco rate of infection was the highest per capita in the nation. Public funds, research and government aid was inconceivably low. Every healthcare professional and hospital in the city and the nation felt the impacts of this epidemic. This includes Letterman Army Hospital in the Presidio, which used to be located right behind where I'm standing now. The hospital began testing for HIV in military personnel and veterans in 1985. In the following years, the hospital would provide educational material about HIV and AIDS and seek out volunteer massage therapists to better serve patients who were diagnosed with AIDS. Pat Norman served as the first openly gay employee with the San Francisco Health Department and as the first coordinator for lesbian and gay health services. In 1985, Pat Norman said, in the case of AIDS, it took two and a half years to get a response. For people to begin to understand that people who were gay still deserved a research project. LGBTQ activist Cleve Jones collaborated with Gilbert Baker to once again use art as protest this time against the lack of resources and awareness for HIV and AIDS. Volunteers wrote the names of their loved ones who had passed on place cards and taped them to the walls of the San Francisco Federal Building in 1985. The demonstration resembled a quilt. Cleve Jones grew this event into the Names Project AIDS Memorial Quilt. The quilt was first displayed on October 11, 1987 
during the National March on Washington for Lesbian and Gay Rights. Pat Norman was a co-chair for this event. The quilt featured 1,920 panels, all honoring people who had been lost to the epidemic. The quilt continued to be displayed in Washington, D.C., and when it was displayed in 1992, it had 20,000 panels. Gilbert Baker never patented the rainbow flag and never earned income from its popularity. He said, no patent or copyright could be issued. It didn't bother me. In fact, that was the whole point of creating it. I like the idea of the rainbow flag not belonging to any one individual and the fact that anyone could do anything with it. Baker could not afford to attend the March on Washington in 1978 or the second March on Washington for gay, lesbian, and bi-equal rights and liberation in 1993. This event became one of the largest in LGBTQ plus civil rights history. Gilbert Baker watched from his TV in San Francisco as a million people demonstrated in DC, many holding the rainbow flag. This event inspired Baker to create the longest flag in the world, a mile long, for Stonewall's 25th anniversary the following year in New York. This anniversary commemorated the uprisings at the Stonewall Inn here in New York's Greenwich Village, which began on June 28, 1969. Although LGBTQ acts of resistance existed before the state and across the country, this event was the catalyst for the modern and more visible LGBTQ civil rights movement. Prior to Stonewall, there were barely 50 LGBTQ organizations, and afterwards, about a thousand, plus the annual pride marches to celebrate the occasion. When Gilbert Baker arrived in New York City to sew the world's largest flag, he began attending meetings with Act Up New York, which was started here at the LGBT Community Center in 1987. He called this group the most famous source of radical queer activity in the world. Its outrageous antics were legendary, he explained. Act Up made art out of civil disobedience. It served as the playground of genius media manipulators, all thrusting AIDS into the public's face. In 1988, a workshop was also established here to build panels for Cleve Jones's Names Project AIDS Memorial Quilt. For Stonewall 25 in 1994, Pat Norman signed on to co-chair, and Cleve Jones found sponsorship for Gilbert Baker to construct this record-breaking flag, which Baker explained was to leverage the symbol of our movement into something tangible to fight AIDS. We dubbed the project Raise the Rainbow. Stonewall 25's Pride March was to go down Fifth Avenue, just like most parades in New York. But the city insisted on pushing this event to First Avenue, citing limited availability of police resources. They were also attempting to shield St. Patrick's Cathedral, which had already seen a memorable protest in 1989 from ACT UP, who opposed religious teachings they felt discriminated against the LGBTQ community, such as practices related to the AIDS crisis. A contentious fight with the city ensued, including lawsuits from Stonewall 25 organizers like Pat Norman. So ACT UP, Gilbert Baker, and many others planned a counter protest that would begin in Greenwich Village. Baker writes in his memoir, the stakes are higher than the fate of this one flag. This isn't about where the rainbow flag goes, but how the gay and lesbian community fits into society and under whose terms. After a successful unfurling of the mile-long flag with almost 10,000 volunteers on the official First Avenue route, Gilbert Baker cut up 10 sections and rushed them in a taxi to Fifth Avenue, where he and his fellow activists walked them past a barricaded St. Patrick's Cathedral into Central Park. There they were given to representatives from different countries, which were then flown at pride parades the following year. The rainbow flag was lifted from a national symbol to global icon of unity and hope for the LGBTQ community. The New York City AIDS Memorial is on the grounds of the former St. Vincent's Charity Hospital. The East Coast's first and largest AIDS ward opened in 1984 and modeled after San Francisco General's Ward 86. This location is also one block from the LGBT Community Center, just up the avenue from Stonewall National Monument, as well as sandwiched between Greenwich Village and Chelsea. These neighborhoods have historically housed a significant LGBTQ population who have disproportionately been affected by the AIDS epidemic. A 
although the community was mostly grateful for St. Vincent's service, ACT UP staged a demonstration here in 1989 to protest some of the religious policies and procedures. As a result, the hospital listened to these concerns and made a few adjustments, such as sensitivity training for its staff. This memorial honors those taken by AIDS, as well as the activists, caregivers, health professionals, and researchers, past, present, and future, working to fight discrimination and eradicate this disease. In 1991, volunteers burnt ground on the AIDS Memorial Grove here in Golden Gate Park. In 1995, the epidemic's single deadliest year, and a year after Stonewall 25, the United States lost 50,000 Americans to the AIDS epidemic. In 1996, the AIDS Memorial Grove was designated as the nation's AIDS Memorial Site. When the quilt was displayed in DC in 1996, it had over 40,000 panels. The name's AIDS Memorial Quilt is now housed here with the memorial today. The LGBTQ community exists in the intersections of all groups and transcends borders and boundaries. The stories of our community connect us from the rangers here at Golden Gate National Recreation Area in San Francisco to rangers at Stonewall National Monument in New York City. The rainbow flag is a bridge, a bridge from the Presidio to Stonewall, a bridge through time, through struggles and intersections, and through important sites in our nation's history. And now Gilbert Baker's influence is appreciated everywhere as a unifying symbol of the LGBTQ community. He wrote, I remember what Harvey had said about giving them hope. I plan to sew up hundreds of new rainbow flags to make the event colorful at a time when everybody was ready to paint it black. I wanted to show the world we would survive.